You better be careful around this guy. Have you seen the side armies packing? Here's a look at the Mattel He-Man and Master Universe cartoon collection, Trapjaw, Evil and Arm for Combat. Each figure comes with a battle accessory and a mini-comic from the series that explores the new storylines and introduces heroes, villains, and allies in the timeless battle between good and evil. And aficionados will love the classically stylized retro packaging. Skeletor always tries to find projects for this guy that he can really sink his teeth in. I'm here all day. Just before, of course, we get a closer look at the cartoon collection Trapjaw, the tape measure is telling us that the figure stands exactly six inches in height, or Trapjaw is 15 and a half centimeters tall. Now, three bad guys in. Here's what Trapjaw looks like with his boss, Skeletor, so he has to be on his best behavior. Figure-wise, they're about the, using the same size of body. Of, obviously, they're going to have to tool a little bit more, and Trapjaw is missing, of course, his one arm. Here's as well what the figure looks like with Beastman. Beastman was my favorite figure from the first wave. I feel like I might be saying now the same thing for Trapjaw. He's probably going to be one of my favorite figures, until, of course, we look at Merman. Can't wait to see what Merman looks like. Um, I did also want to bring in the original Origins Trapjaw, so you guys can see. Trapjaw, unfortunately, from the Origins line is one of my least favorites. Didn't like the fact that they overlooked not painting his eyebrows in, and I don't like that they also inverted the colors when it came to his eyeballs. But still, that's what he looks like with the Origins. And we just recently, in fact, looked at Tila. Oh, just again, a painful reminder that they used all the wrong body for Tila. She should have been a lot taller. I don't want to spend much time at all to tell you guys that he comes included with, the, once again, the sheet of paper that just is in the gray to show you the parts that can be swapped out and changed with other figures. Discard away that goes. I did want to spend a little bit more time, though, talking about the mini comic. Not sure, again, why they're deciding to stitch the uh, the end spine here for the comic. You can see there's a little bit of threading here on the end. It maybe isn't as obvious as the one that we got from Tila. Tila's was well, very well into the border here. But unfortunately, though, like... I don't recall the other mini comics. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just happen to have one off to the side here. Maybe, maybe I am missing something. Here's one that came in clue with, I think, uh, Shredder when we looked at the Turtles of Grey Skull. Okay, yeah, the threading's there on the side. Maybe it was just the case that Trap Jaws isn't as obvious. Tila's just happened to like, I mean, you know, the whole thing drawing outside the line. This Tila just drew well, very well into the line and started coloring in the duck. Uh, the comics are going to be exactly the same. This one's entitled Time's Up. Quilly both flipping through the pages. I did order this online, not that if I bought this locally, all the, the bubbles, all the conversational bubbles would all be blank, but this one does have at least dialogue so I can follow along the story. On the back, though, the other characters, Tila and Trapjaw, are already ones that we've looked at. I am on the hunt, though, for Stratos, and I'm quite on the hunt for Merman. Definitely want to get my hands on the Ocean Warlord. Uh, let's move that off to the side. Now, Trapjaw does come included with, once again, an episode-specific accessory. The accessory he just happens to come included with is an internium rock from the episode Double-Edged Sword. I've seen some reviews of people commenting on Trapjaw and more specifically Merman that they come include with things that you pretty much could go to a crafter's market store and be able to find yourself. It does, in a way, sort of just look like a gemstone that you could just probably have found anywhere for like a couple of cents. I think Merman's comes include with the pearl and obviously that just looks like a, a marble. I mean, I think at least Trap Jaws does look like a believable looking accessory that you could tie into something you would have seen in the original Motu series. It isn't very hard in plastic either. Actually, it's got a little bit of give to it. And this can hold in his hand. Although the way he holds it, holds it less like a rock and more like a crystal drumstick. Um, 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 um. At least he does have the means to store. It would be completely a waste of time if this was all just one molded stone and he'd have no way to actually hold it. I mean, he holds it, sure, but he holds it in such, again, an awkward way that it looks like he's actually wanting to chow down on it than it actually used the Eternia rock. Let's move that off to the side. The figure as well comes and some swappable parts. Now, with the original trap jaw, it usually is the case with all trap jaws, really, that you get these arm extra arm attachments. He gets himself a hook and he gets himself as well the blaster. Either one of these, by the way, can be swapped out with his arm. Now, if you look to the back of the figure, he does have only one provided slot because, again, he, he's only really going to be using one of them. He needs to find a place for the other. So that just stores on the back of the figure's body. I don't know if the in the cartoon of Trapjaw actually had a storage place on the back of the figure's body or a, on the back of the character's body where you'd be able to store the extra things. It would make sense because, of course, if he's carrying around all these extra things, unless he's like Adam West Batman that just happens to tuck it behind the cape and it just disappears, he'd have to have a place, I would imagine, to store these extra weapons. What I think was smart, at least on Mattel's part, 
all the bashing I did when we looked at Tila, is that you can either have it on the end of his forearm. So I'm just going to slide it in place so you guys can see. Whoop, twist around the right way. So you can either have the configuration looking like this. Or if you wanted to have it more like the cartoon, what you can do is right here where the bicep swivel would be, you can pop this off completely and you can attach instead the arm cannon right here. Because in the cartoon, in fact, actually you didn't have the longer forearm. Usually at times it usually just, it was attached basically to his shoulder. So you can do something similar to this. Unfortunately though, like while it looks more cartoon accurate, it does kind of give him a little more of a stumpiness to it. Like if only was just the case that I wouldn't want, you know, Maybe if they had found a way to kind of pop it off like right here, just to give him a little bit of extra length. Uh, again, being in the cartoon, he would have had it more closer looking like this. But I think just by giving him just a little bit of extra reach, maybe by say that much, it would just look a little bit longer and a little bit more proportion to the rest of the figure's body. So I do like, again, like they made it a little bit more cartoon accurate. Head sculpt wise, speaking of cartoon accuracy, get a good, good, good gander at Trapjaw's ugly mug. Unfortunately though, one thing that by giving him a cartoon face like this, Unfortunately, it is now done away with the idea of an actual moving jaw. The original Origins, Trapjaw, and every other iteration of Trapjaw we've ever come in, uh, we've ever gotten has always had a movable jaw. This Trapjaw, by only giving him a permanent expression like this, it means you can't actually open and close the jaw. Kind of wish in a way that they could have still painted the face the exact same way and actually given him a hingeable jaw. Still has, of course, a little loop there on the top of his helmet. So if he wanted to zip line, I don't think he even actually zip lined in the series, but you could run yourself a bit of threading there right straight through the hoop and Trapjaw could slide himself down a, a zip line if you wanted to. Colors are pretty good on this guy. You know, more to the brighter colors that you'd expect to see that Trapjaw would be in the cartoon. Very bright, bright blue here. He's got, of course, the bright green there for his belt. Unlike the original trap jaw, though, the trap jaw from before would have had the, of course, the placement on the skull there on the front of his belt. This trap jaw tied more to the cartoon doesn't actually have that. It's completely smooth. Has the green nicely painted there as well. Not quite really red. It's more kind of coming across like a neon pink. He's got that in the loincloth. He's got it down below here on his leg guards. And he's got it down below here as well for his calf guards, too. It's a nice looking figure overall. The thing, uh, well, one thing is that they have used, of course, what seems to be the exact same body for all the other cartoon collection figures. So for a trap jaw, in order to get this extra piece here, what it basically is, is this arm right here, once you pull this out, you can remove this all together if you wanted to. And I suppose you could put this back, but then it would look even more ba basic and, and barren. So you just want to plug this back in place. Just sits in place like that. And then you're going to take yourself your shoulder peg and the peg right there just fits into the provided hole and just plug it in like that. It does sit again a little bit on the more looser side. I kind of wish that they could have adhered this a little bit more to the body so it would be not something that's going to shift around a whole lot on the figure. But again, like a really nice looking trap jaw. This guy, as well as Beastman, I would say is so far my favorites of what we've looked at so far for the cartoon collection. Will that potentially change when we look at Merman? It could very well be. But right now, trap jaw and Beastman for me, my favorite figures from this line. Head sculpt wise, starting with the articulation is going to be on a ball joint. It does rotate all the way around. Head looks down that far, looks up that far, and it does rock back and forth thus far. Arms do rotate, of course, all the way around. I did notice, though, with this arm, this arm isn't so much the issue. It easily comes out 90 degrees. This arm, on the other hand, is a little on the more tighter side. It may have something to do with the fact that they actually had to cup this part of his arm over top of it. Maybe that's making the hinge a little bit tighter. I'm not really even sure. Now, while this guy does, of course, have the swiveling here for the forearm, and of course, there's the elbow bend, unfortunately, then draws the attention to this side where he doesn't actually have that, unless you did want to take this part of the, the arm off, swap it back in, swap back in the forearm, which again slides into place. And now you've got yourself a hinge here, and you also got yourself a bicep swivel, where a bicep would normally be if it wasn't replaced with a robotic arm. There's also, again, like some articulation here where this can rotate too. Waist is only on a straight swivel. Legs move out at 90 degrees, well, not quite at 90 degrees, but they're on a ball joint. You can take the legs, move them forward. You can move them back. A little bit of a swivel at the top. Single hinge only on the knee. Allows the lower leg to rotate back and forth. Uh, you will notice, though, that also with the boots, where this boot normally would be cut right here and then would be swapped out with other, uh, other cartoon collection figures, what they've done instead is that they've made this as one kind of one, one continued piece, but when you're actually swiveling this part, you'll notice that this is the part that stays behind. This is the part that continues to move on its merry little way. He has an ankle pivot back and forth, an ankle rocker as well, and the figure does have peggles on the undersides of his feet. Do I ever really mention that the cartoon collection figures have peggles on the undersides of his feet? If I haven't, I'm mentioning it now. Nice looking trap jaw. Nice looking trap jaw. And again, you know, while maybe I was a little too hard on Tila, maybe I was. 
But I will say, like, what saved this cartoon clutch for at least the second wave is the fact that Trapjaw, first of all, is a scaled right with the rest of the goons from Skeletor's team. And again, they all look like they're, well, again, like Skeletor sort of, again, dropped the ball. But Beastman and Trapjaw, man, those nice looking figures. You know, while I do, again, think that it was smart on Mattel's part to give them actually the means to pop off that forearm and then just have this actually, if you wanted to have it a little bit more close to his shoulder, like he would appear in the cartoon. I sort of feel, again, like the Eternium Rock seems just like a weird out-of-place accessory to include the figure. And again, like the way that he actually holds it, he holds it less like he's holding a stone and more like a crystal drumstick. It's a nice looking figure though. I, I am super excited to get my hands on Stratos, maybe a lot more excited to get my hands on Merman. And if I do get the chance to pick those figures up, of course, reviews will follow. Not that I wanted to wrap up the review with Trap Job by starting off on a tangent, but as a Canadian collector, let me just say, finding anything like this new local stores, squat. Uh, Walmart's Toys R Us, about the only two options a Canadian collector could have when it comes to finding anything new for figures. Mass Universe stuff just sucks when it comes to stocking anything. I don't know why Mattel just feels against the idea of shipping anything over the border to here Canadian stores, but they really need to improve their distribution so that myself and other Canadian collectors alike can actually find this stuff without having to order them online and paying the extra prices to get them. Being said, though, going back to the review here of Trapjaw, I'm glad that at least I was able to finally find both him and Tila, the Tila we've already had a look at, because both figures look really good. Tila, unfortunately, sacrifices the most by just using, again, an Origins body. I don't, I don't know why the decision was made by Mattel to go the route of using an Origins body when clearly oversizing these figures being bigger than their Origins just seemed like it was something that they were doing across the board. Trapjaw at least has the cartoon accuracy and he has the size to at least blend in with both Skeletor and Beastman we've already had a look at. Speaking of cartoon accuracy, he has also as well smart on Mattel's part, because again, it's, it's just not me just bashing Mattel, but smart at least on their part that they gave you a way to reduce the length of his form. So like in the cartoon, you could actually have his weapons closer to his shoulders instead. It does make his arm look a little shorter and stumpier as a result. And one unfortunate thing that he also sacrifices by going with the cartoon accuracy look is that he doesn't have a hingeable jaw. I don't mind the fact that he does a, doesn't have a hingeable jaw because the head sculpt actually looks really good on this guy. And again, the colors on this guy look just as good as he does in the actual cartoon episodes. If you guys are interested to get this one for yourself, I would say that US collectors probably could have an easier time of finding these things in the wild. You probably could go to your local Target stores. I think even, in fact, Merman and Stratos are right now stocked in stores. Here's a Canadian collector again. If, if I wanted to get my hands on Stratos or I want to get my hands on Merman, unless there's a Canadian collector out there that's willing to pick one up for me, if not, I'm definitely going to have to order these online. Well, have you guys been collecting any of the cartoon collection figures? Let me know down below in the comments section which ones have been your favorites so far. If you haven't yet had the chance to pick up any of these, based at least on what we've looked at here in reviews, what have been your favorite cartoon collection figures? If you guys also as well enjoyed this video, want to hit it with a like. If you guys are loving the content, yes, that you guys are seeing here on a regular basis and certainly want to stick around for more. Uh, hitting the subscribe button can be your first step. Your second step would be turning on the bell notification. Why is there a two-step process? I don't know. I, I mean, I only just do things for YouTube. I don't actually work for Google. If I worked for Google, things would have been changed a long time ago. But yeah, make sure you're coming back here on a regular basis. Even though we are wrapping things up right now, at least for the cartoon collection, there will be some Motu stuff still coming your way. So make sure you're coming back here on a regular basis. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.